In today's video, we're going to be taking a massive look into the upcoming temperature pattern. We have three different models to show you guys today. The first one is going to get us through the next 10 days like normal. The second one there is going to get us all the way through the rest of November, the rest of December, and even to the beginning of January. And then the third model is going to give us a month-by-month -month look at the entirety of of the winter time, so there's a lot of exciting things coming up within this video, so be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, a lot more videos on the way just like this one. Now as we just move on with this, I mean, first off, we're taking a look at coast to coast cold temperatures as of today, uh, really, really cold temperatures. We called for this and this sure enough is what happened, a very, very rare coast to coast cold weather event. Things are going to get even colder in the east here. Uh, as we're reaching kind of the end of the weekend into early next week. So this is going to be Sunday night, actually the 20th of November. And we can see a lot of cold air stationed over the eastern United States. And the western United States is looking quite cool, but there actually is a positive PNA because it's Pacific North American oscillation, not Pacific United States oscillation. Uh, so we can see that there is overall warmer temperatures for a lot of the western North America regions here. And this is playing a role. This is sending the cold air into the eastern United States overall. So I would say there is a bit of a positive PNA regardless. We can see that this area here, we have a warm bubble, and this area here has a warm bubble. And what this is doing is it's funneling all of this cold air through those two warm air masses and forcing it to come through. Um, and the only really area it can head is the eastern United States from that trajectory. So that is the entire upcoming pattern, basically. We do get a little bit more mild right around Thursday through Saturday here, potentially. The models, I got a couple comments yesterday because the models have been flip-flopping on this idea a little bit. Some days they're showing a little bit of a colder solution, and then other days they go back to showing a little bit more of a mild patch here uh, during this period so it is a little bit up in the air uh, no pun intended there but definitely we can see by the time we're reaching the 27th 28th time frame right around the end of November we do cool right back down actually here for the eastern United States certainly dealing with a positive PNA as well out west which again forces the cold air to move around that warm air mass into the eastern United States now that's already the next 10 days let's take a look here at our uh, our model here that's going to get us pretty far into uh, December and even January, like I mentioned. So uh, this is the next five days, according to this model, very cold from coast to coast. We've kind of already established that. So what we're going to do is just move on to the 25th through the 30th of November. And as we can see, this model is calling for, again, colder than normal conditions in the east, warmer than normal conditions out west which this is going to be a very established positive PNA here if that does verify, which again, I've, I don't think I've said it in this video, but the warm air masses and the cold air masses here work like water and oil. So when we do see this warm air mass called a positive PNA out west, when the western North America regions are all, all warm like this, it's considered a positive PNA. That forces the cold air to not move into that region because it's like water and oil like I mentioned. It has to go around it, which means... Eastern United States is right in line with where that cold air usually would be headed. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now here's the 30th of November through the 5th of December. And as you can see, this model keeps us still just really, really cold here. Um, let's continue this on. 5th through the 10th of December. And again, still cold in the east. Warmer overall out west. There will be some colder spots, it appears. But certainly looks war uh, warmer out west overall to me. Uh, and then we can see the 10th through the 15th of December here. We have plenty, plenty of colder air in the east for the most part still around. So this is a very potent and very long-lived cold pattern according to this model. And we don't see too strong of a positive PNA anymore. There is some warmer temperatures in the west overall. But up in the northern regions, some of these southern regions as well, of Western North America are cooler overall. So certainly uh, an interesting pattern. It is long range, so we will take it with a grain of salt. But even through the 15th through the 20th of December here, we see this model continuing to show this cold air over the eastern United States. And you have to imagine that we would get some snowstorms along the east coast if we saw cold last this long 
through into December it is almost inevitable. December 20th through 25th almost looks the coldest here right around Christmas week. I would absolutely love that if that did take place. And a Christmas snowstorm would be even better, um, but definitely would take the colder air being in place because I can't say that for every year. 25th through 30th of December, still cold in this area, still warmer overall for the western two-thirds, I would say. And then right around, this is the end of the model run, but the 28th through the 2nd of January, it still has cold centered over the east and overall warmth for most of the west here, which you could argue would be a bit of a positive PNA, but it's hard to decipher here. Again, take it with a grain of salt, but this model shows through the next 45 days, us staying cold in the east for the most part. There will be warmer days, obviously, but mostly this model is indicating would be colder for most of that time frame, which would be just a really, really cold and, and potentially snowy start to the winter, which we've kind of alluded to this winter possibly being a front-loaded winter, which means December and January primarily being the snowy cold months, and then February and March really tapering off and actually being maybe an early spring. Uh, appears like that's possible. Obviously, that's one of those things that's very, very hard to predict, but Certainly is something I've seen floating around for sure. Now, here is our month-by-month -month forecast. And just for the record, this is the rest of November here that we're taking a look at. So certainly very cold in the east. Looks warmer out west. Uh, positive PNA kind of establishing itself early this or late this month like we've seen. Now, by the time we reach December, this model here shows us getting a little bit of cooler air, but nothing like that one we just took a look at. But the warmer air is around for the west, so I would say we are in a positive p a out here. So I think this one's maybe downplaying the amount of cold air that's going to make its way into the east here for December. I think it's going to be a bit colder than that. I will say this model does for January show a negative p a pattern for January, which the last one doesn't get us to this. So that we, we don't really have anything else to compare this to. It does show a negative p a here, which forces, this is the exact opposite of the pattern, by the way, that we just saw a minute ago. This forces the warm air to move around the cold actually into the east or in the United States. This is, I'm glad it's showing this actually because it's a good example of a negative PNA. This is the opposite of that positive PNA we just talked about. Now February on this model, and this contradicts what I just said a minute ago, but on this model it shows a little bit of a positive PNA re-establish itself and then colder air, maybe the coldest of the season according to this model, re-entering into the east or the United States bringing very very cold air. Now this model in particular shows February being the coldest, December also being pretty cold, and then January being warmer. That's all obviously pretty possible, uh, but definitely the the signs are looking more like a front-loaded winter than anything, but it's, again, really, really hard to say for certain. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do enjoy making these long-range videos, and I know you guys do as well because they always get the most views, the most likes, the most comments. I know that you guys love them so, so much. Uh, so that's why I decided to come out here and do this one. I want to do these at least once a week. Uh, I think that's going to be a really, really good way to go about things. Um, so let me know if you like that idea or not, or maybe you want even more than that. Let me know what you guys think genuinely down below, and I'll be sure to check that out. So let me know your thoughts. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe for more weather-related content. Like I said, we do upload every single day, and we do make these long-range videos in particular. Uh, at least once a week or so. So be sure to subscribe. You can even hit that bell icon uh, to get daily notifications when we do upload. So be sure to do those things. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.